Hello there folks. In this video I'm going to go over the creative process that you're engaging in in the course and you'll continue to engage in that process across the whole 15 weeks of the semester. So what do I mean by creative process? I call this learning out loud because it leads to long-term learning plus transfer of that learning to different contexts and we achieve that not in one week of learning. We achieve that throughout the course. So let me illustrate how the learning out loud process will work for us in our course. You will always start off by understanding specific focus areas of our course content. Remember, I guide you by telling you what content to focus on. You're always welcome to go beyond what I suggest, but I try to help you focus from the beginning so that you understand those key concepts. I like to think of it as walking into a pitch black room and having a headlamp that helps me to find the uh, content that I need. So that's what that focus uh, point means. You then make sense of it in a discussion forum or in perusal by organizing the content, comparing it, contrasting it, and then number three, integrating it. You'll notice that sometimes I ask you to connect it to your own experience with the topic. What's it different from? What's it similar to? How does it relate to real life contexts? And then how might you apply it to future contexts? Then you are currently working on that first draft. And that's really about looking back at your learning or even your learning this week and thinking, okay, how might I communicate this to an outside audience? But first, how do I make sense of it? And this is truly a first draft. It should not be polished or complete in any way. But you are creating something and you are sharing it. And that something can be a set of notes that you have and you show a picture of your notes in the discussion forum. And I'm going to give you some examples of how I always do this as part of my own learning. Over time, folks, you're going to use these notes or your sketches. They're going to become digital artifacts. And as you know, in the instructions, those artifacts can be an infographic, a blog, a video blog or vlog, um, a screencast, any number of things. And part of the process will be you critiquing other students work and by critiquing that means giving them advice and recommendations to improve their work, not grading them. And then that process will continue. You revise your work as you expand your understanding and you have more learning experiences and you make even more connections. So think of this as the beginning and then you'll go through this cycle where you see other people's work and you help them with it and you start to revise your own work and even create more products, digital artifacts. By the end of the course, number six and seven, you will finalize your work and you'll publish it to your ePortfolio and ideally share it more publicly. That's not required though. And the publishing will be in the form of a website or of an ebook, but no need to worry about that now. Think about your ideas and making sense of them. So let me show you some examples. Here you have some notes I took in preparation for a TED Talk that I was going to give, a presentation. So I had to really make sense of a lot of research and my own understanding, my own lived experience, those connections that I had made as I did the research as part of my doctoral studies, but also my own ongoing research. And I call this learning out loud. So as you can see, that's the top of my notebook and the theory is called generative learning, one of the theories that's relevant. So I started by combining images and words on paper to create a presentation and that presentation was my TED Talk. And I'm not going to spend time sharing my TED Talk with you, but I just wanted you to see that I started out with putting my ideas on paper in the form of words and diagrams or images. I also have expanded uh, those ideas that it started out in a note form into a blog post. So I encourage you to do that with your discussion forum posts from the past. You've already put the work into expressing yourself in plain English, inciting your content and giving references for your audience. And now you can bring it together into a blog post if you like, a draft blog post. My blog post, of course, started out as a really rough draft and over time I refined it and I finally published it. So that's another example. And here we have from my background again, 
some notes that I took on adult learning theory. So notice that it does not look pretty and clean or linear. There are lots of things that I return to and look at over here. I um, used images. I used diagrams such as time and that triangle means change to me. And then these arrows that connect ideas and different images that have um, meaning for me. This is like a measuring stick or a ruler. The point is that this is all personal to me and it helped me to make sense of different topics and different sources of information. So this information eventually got boiled down into something that I started to identify in patterns. And again, I was combining images with words. And notice that there's also this timeline on the side. So this is another way that I started to understand these different learning theories after taking notes first and foremost. And eventually the understanding got deeper and I thought a little bit more about the connections between these words and images. And I created an infographic. So I just want to show you the infographic I created. Oops, that's not it. Here we are. So this is the infographic that eventually I created and shared with my students. So you can see the carrot and stick are here. The name is here. And of course, I added more information. And this is a timeline as well. I've got the year, etc. But folks, this did not happen overnight. This was over maybe a four or five week period of me putting information together, going back to my sketches and drafting and drafting and revising and critiquing my own work. So that's an example of the infographic. Let's go back to another example. And this is something I've created in my policy issues and ethics course to illustrate how different systems work together uh, as part of systems theory. And again, this is an example of my understanding, starting off from reading several different research articles and books on ecological systems theory. And th I boiled a lot of it down to this image that I also use in my consulting. So when I work with different organizations and tell them, wait, we have to take a systems approach, I show them this image and talk them through it to illustrate my point. So again, these are words and images that became a kind of infographic. So in the end, you will be taking these creations that you make this week, whether it's a blog, a sketch, anything that feels right to you. Eventually you'll make a prototype and a prototype is just a mock-up that's actually real. So this is a website that I've created that is an example for you as a prototype and I'm just going to take you through that website to show you how it's not perfect and you see I've written this site is under construction but I've got some placeholders here with an image and an introduction and I've got an about me page um, and I've got course content here Eventually, I'm going to have to change the title of this page. Um, I don't want it to be course content because that will be meaningless to my audience. But I do have some pages that are dedicated to specific content, including curiosity in the science of learning and a resources page that I've started. So this is where I'm going to put all my recommendations. But this is truly a draft form, right? It's incomplete, but I've got some placeholders and you will be creating a prototype later on in the course. All right, let's go back to one final set of examples and show you the um, final version of a website which you will be creating and that's an e-portfolio. So this of course is my portfolio uh, for my own learning and ongoing professional development. That's the purpose that I've chosen for my e-portfolio. So I've got about me and then different categories here related to um, my own learning journey, let's say. So you are currently here at this stage here. You're, you've already done the understanding through those focus points. You've made sense of the content, but not complete sense, right? You're still learning. And then you have started to integrate your understanding with what does it matter to me? What is it connected to that I've experienced? What is it different from? 
And number four, you're creating a first draft, which could exactly could look exactly like those notes that I shared with you. And one last thing, since I gave an example for the policy class, I want to show you an example for the leadership class. And I studied leadership at the doctoral level and I later taught it. So I found that this presentation was helpful for me. And if you remember in chapter one, we went through a timeline. So the timeline that I came up with started with this sort of big man, single leader theory. But over time, I started to notice, oh, what's happening on this timeline is similar to how research has evolved. And that's the middle section of this infographic. And also how our understanding of learning and learning theory. You will not be creating something this complex, but I started to notice when I was doing my doctorate that the timeline for leadership, which is over here on the left, had some similar themes to the timeline for learning theory. And, oops, I can't get back. And in the middle, the timeline for research. So I decided to put them all together and I worked with another uh, doctoral student when I did that. So that's it, folks. That is the process that you will be going through throughout the course as part of your learning. But now you're truly in that first draft stage where you're, you can even share a photo of your understanding of a concept from our course. So don't feel you have to be polished or perfect. You're putting your ideas out for all of us in the class to help you to refine and understand and what you're creating this week will eventually become a digital artifact. So keep the great questions uh, coming and uh, try and tap your creative side and remove that perfectionist tendency. This is all about putting your ideas out there knowing full well that we'll return to them to continue refining our understanding and also the product that we will create. All right, bye for now.